Okay, let's take a look at some of these uh, exponentials and look at their characteristics. Uh, and we'll start off by looking at some tables and seeing if these are, in fact, exponentials. We talked a little bit about this in the last video. Let's take this first one. We've got, okay, they've laid it out nicely for us in that we've got the x values increasing by 1 each time. What about the y values? Ah, they have a consistent difference of 2, don't they? Well, that's great. That means my delta y over the delta x, which is my slope. Since these are consistent, this is a linear table, actually. And so that's equal to 2, and that means my formula is going to be y equals 2x something. And, of course, all I have to do is look at one of these. 2 times x would be 4. I'd have to add 3. So it looks like the equation that goes along with this table would be 2x plus 3. And, of course, that's not exponential. That's linear. Let's look at this next one. Again, nicely laid out in that the x values increase by 1. But what's happening to the y values? They're doubling each time. Do you remember? That's exponential with a scale factor of 2. So I know that this is something y equals a times 2 to the x. All right? And I can go from there. Let's see what I can do. Uh, well, the other thing that I know is that a, when it's just a, b to the x, the y-intercept is the a. Well, can I determine from this table easily what the y-intercept would be? Uh, yeah, because every time it's going this way, it's becoming half of the previous value. So at 0, this would be 3. All right, and that means this equation is y equals 3 times 2 to the x power. Great. Let's take a look at this third one, see if that's linear or exponential. Well, again, difference of 1 on top, but let's look here. This is 10, and that's 14, and that's 18, uh-oh, that's 22. Well, it's not the same, so it's not linear. And these numbers are not doubling, or I can't figure out by just looking at them that there's any factor. It wouldn't have to be doubled. It could be any constant multiplier, but I don't see one. But I do notice something else. If I took the second difference, look at this. There are four. This is actually an indication that this is a quadratic, okay? Now, in this case, uh, this is actually y equals 2x squared plus 3. And if you take this, this x squared would be 4 times 2 is 8, plus 3 would get you 11. You could determine that by putting these data points in your calculator and doing a quadratic regression, you would know to do a quadratic regression because the second difference is constant. That's an indication of a quadratic. So here we have a linear example, and we have an exponential example, and we have a quadratic example. Cool. Okay, let's go to something else here. When we talk about parent functions, remember, we actually drew two graphs, didn't we, when we did the exponential? And that's because you have a growth exponential. That's when the b is, between, is larger than 1. And then you have a decay exponential when the b in y equals a b to the x is between 0 and 1. And we related that to the stretch and compression when we do transformations of any of our equations. All right. Some 
I like to think of all the growth exponentials as being one family. Remember what the basic definition of a parent is. The parent is the simplest example of a family of equations that all have the general same shape graph. And of course, your growth exponentials are generally like this, and your decay exponentials are generally like this, right? Okay, another characteristic of this is that when it's just y equals a b to the x, in all cases, you have an asymptote, and the asymptote is y equals 0. And this means that this graph is going to approach 0 at the extremes. It's never going to hit 0, and y equals 0 out here at the far end. It's approaching this line, y equals 0, the x-axis. Out here at the far left end, as x is approaching negative infinity, then the value of the function is approaching 0. It never touches 0. It just gets closer and closer. That's your definition of an asymptote. Okay? Let's take a look at some individual functions and see if they're increasing or decreasing. Now see, generally, you think that if their growth, in other words, if the b is larger than 1, you're going to think that that's increasing. But there is an exception to that. So let's take a, a simple one. This would be a growth, wouldn't it? y equals 5, 3 to the x. Is that going to be increasing or decreasing? Well, that's going to be increasing, and that's going to graph like this. 5 is going to be your intercept, and this is going to come along like this and go up. So that is definitely increasing, isn't it? What about y equals 0.3 times 3 to the x? Uh-oh. Well, now we have a fraction. But the b is still larger than 1. So this is going to be a growth scenario. The intercept is going to be 0.3. So it's going to be much closer to the x-axis. And it's going to go like that. It's still going to be increasing, isn't it? What about um, y equals 3 and 0.3? X. Now I've interchanged the A and the B. Okay, well, now this one has a y-intercept of 3. But this is a decay scenario. This is going to go like this. So that's going to be decreasing. And when we say increasing or decreasing, we're talking about as you move from left to right on the graph. In this case, it's like slope. As you move from left to right, is it going up? That's a positive slope. If it's going down, you have a negative slope. Let's try another one. What about y equals negative 3.3 3 to the x? What happens to all of our formulas when we add a negative out front? Doesn't that flip it across or reflect it across the x-axis? So this is going to be a little bit different. You're going to have a negative 3 as your intercept. And this is actually going to come up like this. And do you see, because of this negative, what was going to be a decreasing function is now increasing. It's going up as it goes to the right. Okay, one of the other things that you need to recognize, we talk about y equals 0 being the asymptote when it's a, b to the x. But what about if it's transformed? Let's say it's y equals 3 
times 2 to the x plus 2. Well, what just happened? I moved every point on that graph up two units. So what would normally be y-intercept of 3 and then be exponential, that would be like this. Now, I've added the 2, which moves everything up 2 units. So now, it's going to be like this. Okay? And that means it's going to have an asymptote, not of y equals 0, but of y equals 2, because that 2 has moved it up 2 units. Follow? Okay, I think you can do your homework from there. Good luck.